guys, welcome back. Uh, sorry it's been a few days. Um, was working on a really neat little project for this week. Um, I ended up doing a bit of a, a little something different. Did a PowerPoint presentation on my personal hero uh, when it comes to science, Rosalind Franklin. Um, she's known as kind of like the mother of modern day DNA and um, virus study very very cool very very smart lady um so uh, without any further ado i'm going to go ahead and switch over to the powerpoint and i'm going to go ahead and start on that all right so as i said today's video is going to be on rosalind franklin um, I decided to do something a little different this time around and do a nice little PowerPoint presentation so you guys can see. Um, Rosalind Franklin is one of my personal heroes. Um, she laid the foundation for DNA research um, and a few other things that we know today. Um, and this is, uh, this is a picture of Rosalind Franklin here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get into this. A little bit about her early career. Um, she was definitely a pioneer in DNA research. Um, she originally earned her doctorate from Cambridge University in physical chemistry. Um, I find that interesting that she went from physical chemistry to essentially biology. Um, in her career. Um, her original thesis was based on the porosity of coal and when she left college and she went to work in France she um, actually worked with a gentleman named Jacques Mering and she er learned um, x-ray diffraction from him and that actually became pretty um, important in her later career. Um, in 1951, she arrived at King's College. Um, she arrived at King's College um, on a fellowship proposal uh, for x-ray diffraction studies of different proteins. And it was here in King's College that she actually perfected the use of x-ray crystallography, which became pretty important later on. Um, her DNA discovery, she worked with a um, student named Raymond Gosling. Um, her and Gosling actually discovered two different forms of DNA. Uh, they discovered um, a dry A form, which is basically when the DNA is dried out. Um, it has one shape, and they discovered a wet B form, which is when the DNA is wet, it has a different shape. And it was here that the famous photograph 51 was taken. Um, and this is photograph 51! Yay! Um, so this photograph to me is very interesting. I love it. Um, it's the first image of the double helix structure of DNA. And it was taken using the x-ray crystallography technique that Franklin um, perfected while she was here at King's College. Um, her and Gosling are the ones who actually made this discovery. Um, unfortunately, due to a personality conflict with Maurice Wilkins, which is another scientist that she worked with at King's College, um, her this photograph was passed on to Watson and Crick without her knowledge or consent. Okay, so 1953 was kind of a big year. Um, this picture here that you see, this is the modern day um, animation of the DNA double helix. You can see the teal is the backbone, the sugar phosphate backbone, whereas the blue, red, green, and yellow, those are the different nucleotides. Um, and I actually have this picture tattooed on my arm. It's one of my favorites. Um, so 1953 Watson and Crick's paper was published. Um, they even though Franklin's picture, photograph 51, um, made the, made their paper essentially. Um, it showed them that the triple helix shape that they were working on was incorrect. Um, and it showed them that it was actually a double helix. She barely got a mention in their paper. Um, in the same journal that Watson and Crick's paper was was published in, um, Franklin's paper was also published. Um, but because it was published after Watson and Crick, it seemed to uh, just support their uh, paper instead of actually being the forerunner of the research. Um, and it was also in 1953 that Franklin left King's College. Um, due to the controversy with the DNA um, discovery, she was actually forbidden to study uh, DNA any further, so she turned her focuses uh, she focused her studies on RNA and the tobacco mosaic virus. Um, she actually ended up publishing 17 papers 
on the tobacco mosaic virus. So these papers actually ended up laying the foundation for structural vir virology that we know today. Um, unfortunately, in April of 1958, after a um, fight with ovarian cancer, she did uh, pass away. Uh, she did receive some of the first um, radiation, experimental radiation treatments for cancer, but unfortunately ended up succumbing in April of 1958. And that's really all that there is. I will, these are the sources. These are my sources. I will definitely be posting them below in the information. I highly recommend that you check them out. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's my little presentation on Rosalind Franklin. Like I said, she's my personal hero. Um, the work that she did with DNA research is just, it's absolutely fascinating, and without her, there's absolutely no way that we would be where we're at today when it comes to this type of research. Um, as someone who is a genetics major and is hoping to get into stem cell research eventually, um, I just, uh, she's my hero, and I absolutely love the work that she did. She helped uh, lay the foundation for a lot of stuff. Um, so that's really it for today. Um, like I said, I posted my sources down below. A couple of books I highly recommend that you check out. There's Rosalind Franklin, The Dark Lady of DNA. It's supposed to be a really good biography on her. Um, also, there is a book called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, um, where we kind of get some of our first stem cell lines. Um, I highly recommend that you check both of those books out. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I always, always, if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up there and hit that little subscribe button, share it with people that you think you might that you think might enjoy it. And I will see you next week. Mwah.